Hi, I'm Tamid Latif from NC State University, North Carolina, USA. I work with the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering and the National Science Foundation Nanosystems Engineering Research Center for Advanced Self-Powered Systems of Integrated Sensors and Technologies, or ASSIST Center in short. At NC State, we work towards developing ultra-low-power multimodal wearable sensors for health and environmental monitoring. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about our efforts on developing packaging for effective ambient ozone sensing using our RISPHONE physiological and environmental monitor. First, I'll give a brief overview on our application area, asthma, the relevance of ozone to asthma, and how we propose to use our wearables in, the, in asthma management. I'll then move on to the main portion of this presentation, where I'll talk about our design enclosures, and how we have tested our uh, sensors using these enclosures and uh, evaluated the results. An improved and cost-effective approach to asthma care and management will be beneficial for many ends. Asthma is a respiratory condition where airway and lung inflammation cause breathing difficulty. With millions of people suffering in the US and worldwide, Related healthcare cost is tremendous. Now, ozone promotes lung inflammation and as such is a common trigger for asthma exacerbation. Studies suggest that ozone exposure at lower levels, even below the US National Ambient Air Quality Standards or NAAQS of 70 parts per billion can decrease lung function and increase respiratory symptoms in asthmatics. Hence our focus on ozone in this research. At the NSF Assist Center, we are working towards developing multimodal wearable engineered systems for vigilant monitoring of physiological and environmental conditions with the goal of improving health outcomes. These low powered systems in the form of our wrist worn watch and a chest worn patch will perform correlated sensing of the users uh, health parameters like ECG and PPG um, and uh, ambient environmental parameters in real time. Data would be used to identify changes in the user's physiologic conditions and predict asthma exacerbations through advanced data analytics. The user would take actionable decisions based on customized device notifications. For example, they could perhaps take their medication suspend current activity or get indoors to possibly prevent an asthma onset. The eventual goal of such wearable systems would be in, to improve quality of life as well as impact economy in the health industry. Our wrist one device is equipped with an ultra low power ozone sensor that we developed at NC State. It also has a temperature and relative humidity sensor. The engineered system uses data from the built-in environmental sensors as opposed to taking data from weather stations so as to utilize environmental data with higher spatial and temporal resolutions. The baseline resistance of these tinoxide sensors increases when exposed to ozone gas molecules. An ultraviolet LED periodically flashes light onto the sensor to dissolve the oxidizing gas molecules thereby recovering the sensor resistance to an initial ba baseline value and preventing the resistance from saturating. We utilize a modular design for our wearable device. So the system motherboard with the MCU, uh, radio, UV LED sits at the bottom of the enclosure here. And uh, the ozone sensor on a daughter board sits on top via connection headers. The illustration here shows um, a cross sectional D of the boards, the motherboard with UV LED and daughter board with ozone sensor in a completely closed enclosure, a water and dust resilient enclosure. This by providing necessary protection to internal components, the obvious issue here is the reduced sensitivity of these sensors due to lack of contact with uh, ambient air. What we would need here is an improved packaging for optimized sensing. Enter circular openings along the 
side wall of the enclosure. This can passively allow air or gas flow to the sensors inside. This would prove sensitivity, however, exposed openings can raise more concerns. The possible solution is covering the openings with these pressure, uh, these protective membranes called pressure vents. These EPTFE are expanded polytetrafluoroethylene based membranes allow airflow while providing resistance against water or dirt. Some reduction in flow can be observed. And this brings us to the design of the enclosure and the placement of the side wall openings. We would need an optimized sensor performance while maintaining structural integrity of the enclosures at the same time. In this regard, six openings would correspond to maximal airflow to these sensors. On the other hand, two openings would provide minimum number with one possibly functioning as an inlet and the other opening as an outlet. This design consideration was set up to compare the ozone sensor performance of our device without any enclosure and, and with these enclosures here. No opening, two openings, six openings, and then six openings with pressure vents. These enclosures were printed using an SLA printer. Uh, on the right, you can see six opening enclosure with pressure vents on the openings. Three of them are visible. The vents have an outer adhesive ring, which makes it convenient to attach them to the side wall opening. The device was tested in a seal chamber shown here without uh, the top. The air and with multiple two minute bursts of ozone at concentrations of 50, 100, and 150 ppm. Relevant data, including sensor resistance, were collected using a custom iOS app. The overall sensor resistance increases when exposed to ozone, as seen is in this representative data. The resistance then goes down as the ozone level goes down. Uh, the zigzag here is shown, uh, the zigzag line is shown here in this plot. What happens is, Resistance increases under ozone exposure, and then we try to recover the sensor resistance to a baseline value by flashing the UV LED at 10 percent duty cycle. This way, at the end of a run, when the ozone level settles down, um, the resistance would go down to an initial baseline uh, value. The derivative of this resistance with respect uh, to time, or dr by dt, can be used to correlate sensor performance with actual ozone level, uh, ozone concentration. Here we see another representative data from a uh, six opening with pressure vent enclosure. We see sensor response dr by dt in ohms per minute plotted again, plotted with um, ozone uh, concentration uh, bursts. 50, 100, and 150 ppb. Um, these DR by DT values would differ uh, based on enclosure scenario. A no enclosure or more openings would mean more airflow to the sensors and consequently a higher uh, DR by DT. These data were used to take average of the DR by DT peaks at each concentration level for each enclosure scenario to get a DR by DT versus ozone concentration plot. We do see here that more exposure to ambient environment leads to a higher DR by DT uh, number. The, uh, the scenario with no exposure had the highest numbers. These are followed by six opening, six opening with pressure vent, two opening, and completely closed enclosure. The last one here is the lowest number and lower sensitivity. The data for um, Six openings slightly decreased with the introduction of pressure vents. Uh, speaking of, the slope of the data with pressure vents was similar to that of no, no enclosure, meaning a similar sensitivity between the two scenarios. So ambient ozone uh, concentration may be inferred by simply reading the ozone sensor data uh, in your response device. Uh, that's why 
be uh, that's uh, because we correlate the dr by dt values with the ozone concentration levels. We need this would need to be further investigated with multiple sensors and to get a better estimate. So data from multiple sensors using multiple enclosures and from a wider range of ozone levels can help more precisely correlate DR by DT with ambient ozone level concentration. Uh, so physiologic data correlated with these environmental data can aid in predicting asthma exacerbation. To summarize, we have evaluated various enclosure strategies for our wristwand ozone sensor designed for asthma management. We have proposed an enclosure with six pressure vent attached openings for optimized ozone sensing. The next stages of testing of our research will assist us in adopting our wristwand sensor systems for testing and deployment under real world conditions. Lastly, I acknowledge the National Science Foundation for supporting our research, Ilu Joe and Stephen Lipa, and NC State NNF where the sensors were fabricated. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>